Hello, homeschool parents. Um, I wanted to talk to you quickly about Sedona's curriculum materials that I use. I've had several requests for me to put it on video to kind of show a little bit, a bit more about it. Um, we don't use a boxed curriculum at all. Um, I piece together the per curriculum every year. She's now doing sixth grade level work, and again, we've never used a box. So first of all, I'll go through each subject kind of individually so you can see the different um, things that we're using. So like I said, she's in fifth grade, but she's doing sixth grade level work. So that this, these things would be for that grade level. First of all, we've got a lot of these books. Um, you can see different uh, subjects. We love these. These are really great for the kids. These are described by the actual um, writers as the notes of the smartest kids in the class. It's very similar to me to a fun version of Cliff Notes. I don't know how else to describe it. But each chapter um, has a little check your knowledge thing at the end. So it's like a reading and comprehension, which I really like. We use a lot of reading and comprehension type of things in our studies. So she's doing this world history um, for the school year. And I happen to find this workbook to go with it. Now, again, they don't go together, but they really, really go together. And again, this is reading passages and comprehension. And then so there's some other fun activities mixed in here. Um, in fact, she just did one today and found out there was some craft things in there for China. So these two books like pair really, really well together for world history at the sixth grade middle school level. Um, these are books that we just keep on hand. We use them all the time when we come up with different subjects. This is Smithsonian um, History of the World in a Thousand Objects, and it is just one of those beautiful coffee table books, lots of great information and colorful pictures. So this is one of our favorites that we'll piece together along with these books, documentaries, um, trips to the museums, and other field trips. This is a Smithsonian also, History Year by Year. This one is great because it is chronological. Um, so we can hit pretty much every subject that's in our world history. And it is just a beautiful, another beautiful coffee table style book. For science, her main book that she's going to be using, again, is one of these. And main in that we use it for the subject areas. And then we'll go ahead and build on that with other books. So we have the Nat Geo. We like Nat Geo a lot for science, the encyclopedia. So a lot of the subject areas will cross over as well as into the Nat Geo science book. This is another just big, thick book with all sorts of great information. So whatever you find in your middle school studies, you're going to find in these beautiful books with lots of colorful pictures and great explanations. We do also have, uh, again, I love reading comprehension. So this spectrum science is laid out in that way where you're going to have a reading and then you're going to have comprehension questions afterwards. Um, and then as well as this. She loves these. They come in many different levels. Um, I'm not sure what grade they go up to, but we've been using them for several years. So this nonfiction reading comprehension. This one's science. They also have social studies. Sedona is not a fiction reader. So when I found these, these were a great find for us. Um, she enjoys the reading passages. They're a page or two long, and then they've got questions. So they work great for that comprehension. Um, these, again, are just a couple extra reading and comprehension. This is the Scholastic, um, just different news articles, and this is kind of just very different things, as well as Brain, Brain Quest. This, to me, is not 
a real school book, but it's one of those things that I let her throw in there. You'll see in a few minutes as one of her choices. Um, she'll do that once in a while, uh, just for something easy and fun. For math, we use again, we have the everything you need for math. And this has everything in it, same thing. So that's all your uh, information. And then we use the Spectrum Workbooks. Uh, we've used these, I think this will be our third year, and I really love them. We don't do Common Core math. We do all, as I say, 80s style math. We carry, we borrow, you know, all of that. Um, and this doesn't have a huge quantity of instruction in it. It's more to me like worksheets. Excuse me, sorry. So um, with this, again, like I said, it's more like worksheets to do the practice the problems. There is some instruction, but uh, we explain it how we want to explain it. And then we use uh, different YouTube videos as well. Math Antics is one of our favorite. Um, and then if I need additional work, I will print additional work from different websites. She uses, this is a brand new one, so there's nothing in it, but she uses graph paper to do her math. It, she writes kind of large. In fact, I could show you one of her books from this year. Um, she writes kind of large and sloppy and all over the place. She is not as organized as I would like to be, um, but she she works better with keeping things in the lines that way with the graph paper. That's a half inch graph paper, which is pretty big. She laughs because I can't do it. It's just, it's too big for me. It's a little ridiculous. So grammar, grammar's one of those that I have a lot of stuff for and we do a lot of different things. Um, we have, of course, the English book. It's just the same thing. It's going to be your um, detailed information about what you need to know for middle school. But I break everything down into individual workbooks and different things. So she loves these um, vocabulary words workbooks. This is, I think, our third year on these. And she chooses to do those. Spelling, she's not so thrilled with, but I don't think it would matter which book I got. I did order a sixth grade level. We haven't gotten it yet. Um, I think she just doesn't care about doing spelling. So, but she does love the vocabulary one. Um, we grabbed this grammar builder one this year because now as we get to sixth grade, some of the books are changing. She did like some of the older scholastic styles, but they're not the same anymore. So as you get into that middle school year, they're changing up. And then this is diagramming. This is level one, but it's actually, um, let me see grades 5 through 12 so we've only done a first couple in here uh, but sentence diagramming got to do that analogies and then writing fabulous sentences this is one she really hates but I, I try to do more free writing than the book um, and I have guides for her that I use for free writing so we have writing analogies diagramming grammar practice, vocabulary, spelling, and then your basics. We have a lot of grammar stuff. So what I have her do <clears throat> every day, she fills out a form. And she's really good about it, and it's really nice. She has to do all of the top three. So every day, we always do reading, writing, arithmetic, the three R's. Um, math, I will assign to her reading she can make a choice if she because she doesn't read fiction so she's not going to be like some of your kids she doesn't read fiction if she were to read a fiction book she can certainly do that she's welcome to do that but it doesn't happen very often so she could check the other box and write what book she read um but most of the time for her it's science or history and then, you know, sometimes there's something else. She writes down what page number she did. 90% of the time, anything she does with reading, again, is going to have comprehension because I have comprehension built into everything, um, unless it's just a regular book. Math, I always assign. So that one she doesn't choose. 
grammar, this is another one where she has to do these three things, but again, she can choose which she does. So one day she might do writing, one day she might do grammar practice, diagramming, you know, whatever. She can make a choice. So she has to do the three, but she can choose what she reads and she can choose what she does for grammar. Now, when you get down to this section, she has to pick two of anything else on the list. So she has, that's where I put in the spelling and the vocabulary, and then she could add in Brain Quest or some other book she might like there. Or here's a spot she could write in, she did something of the literature book. Or maybe she did a science experiment or a documentary. Or we have what's called our Sedona book where it's um, all of her DNA and it's actually we're studying the countries from there as well as the science behind the genealogy um, or genetics, excuse me. And then art, of course, she does art constantly. And then other, if we go on a field trip or something, we'll write that down. But generally she has to do three R's every day, no matter what, and then two choices. Now, that said, she has to complete these books. So the spelling and the vocabulary and such. So just because she likes a subject, which she does, she'll choose certain ones over others, um, doesn't mean she can't get away with not finishing it. If she finishes, say, the vocabulary book, well, that's now taken out of the mix, and she has to focus more on the spelling book. And that's fine. It all ends up getting done one way or the other throughout the year. Um, so... After she fills out these, she fills out these, this one, one a day. And I put that together with any loose papers. We don't have too many loose papers anymore because a lot of it's in workbooks. And I leave it in the workbook. She just dates all the pages. Um, if she has a loose page, like maybe she did a free writing or a separate math sheet or something, I attach it to these pages. And then they all go with a weekly um print out and I fill this in basically what she did I don't I don't put in too many details because I'm going to take this and attach this to this and I'm going to put it in the monthly folder and that is it so that is um what we're doing for sixth grade I've done it this way pretty much for the last I think we've been doing this three or four years I can't even remember since second grade um but it, it's worked out very well. Like I said, we don't use a box curriculum, but I take the time to put everything together and um, allow her choices. And I think allowing her choices really does make a big difference. It makes it a little more interesting. And if there's a day she's not too excited about doing school or something, she can choose something lighter that day. She could say, hey, can I watch a documentary for this subject? Sure, we mix it up. Alrighty, so there you go. There's a fifth, sixth grade curriculum for you. Bye-bye.